Welcome back to Pittsburgh Vader. So I'm going to start off by coming back to the steering column. If you remember in one of the previous videos, I lowered the column by sticking these small spacers and a longer nut between one of the plates of the steering column and the plate above it. Uh, apparently, and I kind of knew this already, but those spacers are way too small. So I'll be taking the uh, gauge cluster back off, removing those bolts, and I have to go find out exactly what size I need. I'm going to run and get some bigger spacers and bigger bolts, and then I'm going to install those. That way I can lower the steering wheel to where it needs to be. I'm thinking I need to do about an inch spacer. Uh, I'm going to get some of those. I'm going to get some bigger ones. I'm going to test them out, see what's best, and it's pretty easy. So I'm going to go get those now. I also have a mobile mechanic. He's coming to look at the car tomorrow and he's going to diagnose it and tell me exactly what's wrong with it, why it isn't starting. And hopefully in the next couple days, I can get it started. Once I figure it out, I will order the part it needs or parts and install them, get it started, get it moved around and get it moving along. So before the mobile mechanic comes, I have to clean up my extremely messy garage so he has room to work because I've just been kind of tossing parts here and there. So yeah, I need to clean this up. I'll do that real quick. And then we'll come back to the car. I'll get those spacers in and I'll also do some other things around the car. Okay, so... Before I mess with any of the steering column or anything, I'm going to quickly install a cold air intake just because I've had it for a while and never got around to it. This is a $40 cold air intake system off of eBay. Uh, seems pretty high quality. It's just an air intake, so you really don't need super high quality parts just as long as it works. Uh, comes with some silicone... Uh, couplers, a MAF adapter plate. You reuse this part of the uh, MAF sensor, not really sensor, but the uh, hose that reuses it and it has the adapter plate that goes on here to the cone filter and comes with some other little parts here and there. And I'm just going to install it real quick since I have the parts anyways, get that done. Remember <laughs> Okay, so I got the entire intake taken out. Just kind of toss the rest of it over here. You keep the uh, MAF sensor and you add this gasket and the adapter onto here, bolt it in, and then you can stick that back in the original location. The last thing I have to take out is this hose. It comes with a new red one. So I'm gonna root that and then you basically just stick the pipes in, put the couplers around it, and you tighten it up. It's pretty simple. All right, got the intake installed. It was pretty easy, took about a half hour. Just simply unbolt the old one, stick the new one in, you're good to go. So since that's done, I'm gonna start cleaning the garage, get it ready for tomorrow. Actually, I lied. I'm not gonna clean so much as just reorganize all the junk, cause it's 1 a.m. and I just need there to be room for this guy to work. So I'm just gonna reorganize. <laughs>
I just finished up organizing a little bit in the garage. I just gave them a couple feet on each side and in the front and everything so it's easier to work on the car. That's as good as it's going to get for tonight. So I'm going to go to bed, come back tomorrow when he's here, and hopefully figure out why the car is not starting. And I'll let you guys know what I find out. Okay, so it's the next day and the kit's off the car. The mechanics already came and we tried out some things. So they came to the conclusion that the ECU needs to be either reprogrammed or replaced. Everything else is fine. They checked literally every wire and everything else they could think of and came down to the ECU needing replaced. So I'm going to try to send it in to a place I found they reprogram and fix broken ECUs. That way I don't have to reprogram the keys and everything like that. And if that doesn't work, I may just have to end up getting a new ECU for the car. But for now, at least I know what's wrong with the car so we can work on getting that fixed. And since we now know what it is and how to fix it, we're going to put the kit back on and work on some of the other stuff and just keep moving on until we get the car running. For the lowering of the steering column, I ran to Lowe's and got some longer bolts and some brass spacers that are about an inch long. I'm gonna try those out and see if they fit. If not, I'll have to get some bigger spacers, but I think they should be good. First thing you gotta do is take the gauge cluster off and I just kinda left the cords in and hung it back here. And then you locate these bolts and the bottom of them and you take those out and then you go be able to stick the new spacer between these two plates with the longer bolt and you should be good to go. All right, there we go. The steering column is all lowered up. And as you can see, those spacers seem to do the trick. They just get wedged in there, bolt right through the top. And already you can see how much better of a driving position that's going to be. The steering wheel is no longer too high and I think that's just about how I need it. So I'm gonna take the gauge cluster, stick it back on, and we should be good to go. Got the gauge cluster back on, as you can see. Everything's all buttoned up, and that's just gonna give you a much better line of sight, because before the steering wheel came to about here, which would take up this massive area that you would see through the windshield with. So by lowering that, you gain a lot of visibility back, and it's just a much better driving position. So I'm gonna move on to the roll cage. As some of you have commented and probably noticed, the roll cage is rusty. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna hit it all with a wire wheel, get it down to pretty much bare metal and potentially paint it in this video. I'm not sure if I'll have time tonight or not, but I'm at least gonna get it all wire wheeled down. I got a good bit of the roll cage sanded. I started off with a drill and a wire brush attachment, which works well, it just takes a while. So I ended up switching to some sanding blocks, sanding sponges, and those worked a ton better. As you can see, that's how it started off. And then after a couple minutes with the sandpaper, it takes off pretty much all of the rust. So it just looks a ton better. I'm gonna keep doing the rest of the roll cage, but it's turning out pretty good. I'm gonna stop taking the time lapse just because you guys probably don't wanna watch five minutes of me sanding a car, 
So I'm just gonna finish this up, get it done, and hopefully get it painted tonight. There we go, a lot of the roll cage has been sanded down back to bare metal. And unfortunately, not all of it has been. There's about a fourth of the kit that I still have to go touch up and some parts I haven't even started sanding yet because I ran out of sanding, uh, sanding sponges. So I'm gonna go pick some of those up tomorrow and finish this up and get this painted in the next video. But for this one, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. One last thing before I end the video, I was looking at the rear tires when I took the kit back off and noticed that unfortunately there's still a little bit of tread on them. So I was thinking if we can get to 6,000 subscribers before I get the car started, once I get it started and the cage welded on, I'll burn through the rest of that tread either doing donuts or burnout or something. So if doing burnouts and donuts in this with just the cage on is something you'd like to see, subscribe. If not, don't. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.